to talk about the Fish for Knowledge Project virtual work uh, galleries. And sorry that this is the first time uh, I'm delivering a talk in a virtual world uh, conference, so um, I'm slightly nervous, but I'll try to do my best. And in this talk, we are going to talk about the Fish for Knowledge uh, virtual world gallery that was initially built uh, in the Second Life. And the purpose of that uh, was to um, dissimulate our project results uh, to, to the world, if you like, for anybody who is interested. Um, and then later on, um, uh, thanks for Professor Austin K, uh, who um, helped us, uh, who replicated our um, Fish for Knowledge Gallery in the open simulators. And uh, that was uh, located on the open grid. The uh, location of the Fish for uh, Knowledge Gallery in Second Life is provided in the uh, text chat channel. So my name is Jessica Chienberger from Harrow University and from the United States, sorry, United Kingdom. My co-author is Professor Austin Tay. He's from University of Edinburgh, also from United Kingdom. And he is the co-developer and the main contributors of our Fish for Knowledge uh, Gallery. And he's the expert uh, in this project uh, in terms of um, our gallery. So, um, I don't know how different or how similar this project is compared with other uh, projects being presented here. But I saw, and um, just in case you're interested, I'll talk about you know the real life project a little bit before we go in, into our uh, virtual gallery. So the Fish for Knowledge project, and we abbreviate it because it's a very, very long name, but the, the actual name was very, very long and nobody remember. We just call it Fish for Knowledge or F4K project. And it was a EU funded uh, 2.5 million project and they were, um, five project partners. Um, the main purpose uh, is uh, to observe and to monitor marine life, uh, coral reef marine life, and try to understand uh, a part of that um, effort uh, is, um, there are several for in terms of the targeting. First of all is to understand um, marine life as a conservation as a golden standard, how can we move forward from that? Uh, because of particularly a special location, which I will talk about later on. Secondly, is about um, scientific contributions, because uh, there are several uh, technical difficulties that we ha we need to overcome. So, for instance, if you look at the, uh, the first point, is to detecting target in a noisy environment. So this is directly uh, to do with observing marine life in the open water. So traditionally, um, image processing. Uh, people, they do it on a control environment, either uh, in a laboratory environment where they can control the lights, they can control the uh, rubbish uh, in the tank, uh, um, and there's not many other obstructions such as in, in real life, uh, you will have human diver dive into uh, the lenses, a clean the lenses, you don't have the algae problem, you don't have this discoloration problem. Or, uh, for instance, uh, in terms of fish counting, for instance, as part of the uh, objective that we have to achieve is to count the number of fishes. Um, so, for instance, uh, when they were counting the salmon, they were uh, intersecting uh, one part of the uh, stream. So, uh, the salmon were, uh, instead of streaming, uh, they were uh, jumping on the ladders, if you like, and they will count the salmon that way. So, they have very, very accurate uh, fish count. But we don't have this luxury because um, uh, as you will see later on, our site is all in the wild, and the fish just uh, come and go as they like. Um, and the sun uh, will be cloudy or sunny or raining or, you know, whatever uh, is possible out there, and then we will have algae conditions. So, so we have to detect uh, targets, i.e. our fish, in a very, very noisy environment. And on top of that, uh, our uh, scientists told us they want to know the fish species. That's very difficult because, uh, first of all, we have a misrepresentation of lots of fish are all black. They're all black color. So that's very difficult for a camera because we are just doing pure image uh, recognition. We are not actually capturing the fish and then looking at them. Uh, because some of the fish uh, species, you have to uh, dissect them by looking at the bones. But we don't have that luxury. So we just by visual uh, observation. So there's a lot of difficulties in there. 
And the other thing is we have to uh, convey our findings uh, firstly between our partners and to the world, if you like. We have been working with European Union where they have built a very, very large uh, fish ontology and we try to integrate with them. But at the same time, we were using uh, open source fish ontology and the fish database. So we wanted to uh, integrate with them, uh, enrich theirs because we're working in an area where they are now working with. Uh, so we uh, contribute a new uh, uh, ontological classes, if you like, to them. We are talking with marine biologists who are now technical experts. Uh, so we have uh, project ontologies within our team and so on. The other difficulty we uh, face was that there's a massive amount of data uh, that we need to work with and we need to be able to store them and uh, um, find them and answer user query in a very timely manner. So before the project start, the underwater monitoring project already going on for three years. So all they had was image data and no analysis has been done. And we have to catch on that. So the project has been running for another three years. So we have five years worth of projects, uh, worth of data that we have to analyze. And we have to do that in a timely uh, manner. And uh, once we have done that, we wanted to put it on the website so we can service to the world. And thanks for the um, National Center for High Performance Computing Center. They are still running the server uh, to serve the world. Uh, they promise to do that for a further uh, three years, so they may, they may do longer. We have to create some sort of fish uh, database. We have uh, more than 200 different attributes for every single uh, uh, images and so on. So this is a very huge amount of data. I think we are clocking into um, approx approximately 200 terabytes uh, uh, or worth of uh, fish uh, database data. So we have to do that efficiently as well. Um, also, we cannot only have technical data that we can use for workflow people or for image processing people or for our uh, user interface people. We must create it in such a way we can communicate with the marine biologist people. So our project is really multiple. We have to serve different people in different um, initiatives. And most of all is a lot of different disciplines are working together. So we have to train our staff in particular. So myself on workflow uh, side of uh, technology side, and we have database people. We don't know computer vision very much, which is a very, very specialized technology, and we have to work with them. So we have to be trained. And also all of us, we are computer scientists. We have to learn marine biology so we can talk to them and uh, provide some useful tool uh, that can support their job. So that's the overall context of FOK project. Um, just give you a, a little bit of overview of uh, the team members. So from, um, I used to working for a University of Edinburgh so at the time. So at the time, um, I was leading the team of Intelligent Workflow. Professor Bob Fisher, he's an overall coordinator. So he's a big PI of the entire project. So we had two teams in Edinburgh University. We also work with uh, Daniela, she's from uh, Italy. We have worked with Linda, she's from uh, Netherlands, and the Fang Fang. So each team will have our own uh, specializations. And our expert in marine biology is a professor, uh, Xiao Guangzhou. He's very big in Taiwan. He is the uh, main uh, director and the main conveyor, if you like, of uh, uh, biodiversity uh, research uh, of Taiwan. But he also has some important role in Asia as well. Uh, I don't I don't know the actual title, but he has various important role and he's always always flying around. So he is he also lead a team. He is from academic uh, Seneca and he leads a team of biodiversity uh, uh, research uh, center in Taiwan. Uh, a little bit more background is uh, how the uh, wireless uh, grid or sensor uh, is set up. So there is something called TRN. So it stands for uh, the meaning behind that is something like long-term uh, observation uh, for conservation and for maintenance uh, for diversity network. And then what you are seeing in this picture is the, this is a sensor net. Um, at the time of the project, we set up they have five uh, sensors, but they are more now. So what they do is uh, in this uh, national park, uh, different locations, uh, they set up various sensors to gather uh, data. So initially, um, these sensors will gather data, they were sent through wireless network onto the local uh, storage uh, data point. And then they were sent it to central of Taiwan, where they have a mass uh, data center. And then we will retrieve um, some of the useful data that's relevant to our project into uh, north of tai uh, Taiwan, which is Taipei, where the 
the the special uh, the satellite city of Taipei, Xinzhou, is particularly where we are uh, based on. So where we process our data and serve the world, and that's where the server of the uh, Fish for Knowledge project is at the moment. So this is a. Uh, uh, what they call a sensor grid, so uh, how it's uh, distributed in uh, different uh, places in Taiwan. Some are in the mountain, some are on the on the lake, on the mountain, some in the ocean. And then I have a uh, draw uh, two little uh, red dot at the bottom of uh, Taiwan. Those are the observation sites that we have. Um, so in in the Kanding uh, Coral Reef National Park, which is very close to the third nuclear power station, is um, there are three sites there where we particularly uh, put our uh, camera there. So this is uh, what the marine biology would call the golden example for conservation, because this is a very well protected bay because it's near the uh, uh, the power station. So uh, it's free from, uh, for instance, tourism. Uh, there will still be some rubbish, but not so much rubbish. There will not be uh, coral um, collectors uh, for uh, tourism um, purpose. Obviously, there will be uh, there will not be uh, no uh, tourism and so on. So they they hold this area as a golden example for conservation. So there are lots of uh, fish, uh, beautiful coral, and and so on. The problem of that is, although it's such a golden example that people can learn from, you know, if you have uh, this perfect place uh, and free of typhoons damage, which is a natural disaster. So in Taiwan. On average, every year we have seven typhoons, and they will destroy corals. So, so this is such a golden example, but the people cannot easily observe the fish or observe the, the growth or coral. Uh, the reason is because it's a security reason. Every time you go in, you have to get clearance and so on. Therefore, they think if we have underwater camera monitoring, then we don't need people to be there. So this is one of the examples uh, where it uh, makes it very, very um, valuable that to put uh, cameras there. In particular, it's actually very expensive, and it's uh, the expenses on Taiwanese side. Every six year, uh, six, six months, they have replaced all of the um, underwater camera because all these camera are eroded by uh, seawater. On the right hand side, you can see the other um, site is called Orchid Island. Now, deep down in Orchid Island, there is some sort of um, undersea um, reef. It's very, 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 very deep. Um, it's very dangerous. Uh, the the current is very strong. And it's very deep, so uh, the human diver hardly go in there uh, because of dangerous nature of that. However, uh, if if you can put underwater cameras there, then human diver doesn't have to go in that often. So that's again, it was a, a main target that scientists wanted to learn about the fish species, their behaviors, and so on. So so these uh, two main sites. Uh, to start with, we have five cameras, so we have three on the nuclear power, two on Orchid Island, and eventually extend, we have 10 uh, cameras, 10 underwater cameras uh, spread uh, between two, these two different sites. So based on our research, we actually have generated um, a huge amount of data. Um, we have published some I don't remember the exact number now. I think some something like fifty different um, conference workshops and journal papers and so on. We have also uh, run our own special editions on the uh, journal uh, issues, and uh, we have also run our own uh, specialized workshop and so on. However, all of these are traditional research outlets. Um, one of the main motivation of this project is also about marine conservations, just to edu educate the public. And our website, as well as our uh, Fish for Knowledge and Virtual World Galleries, I, what I find out, what I have attracted so far are educators. Um, they are uh, primary and secondary educators. They are um, people who love the ocean. They are divers. So I, so far, I have received uh, inquiries such, such as this. So uh, they are very interested in our project. But before we, we did that, why do you, why were we interested in uh, creating a Second Life uh, virtual world gallery is because um, the technology for 3D interactive uh, virtual environments are mature. They are very mature and they are very advanced and they can help us. Uh, the other one is we have very important visual aspect. We can attract people 
uh, to do that. And this is quite a luxury compared with other uh, computer science uh, projects that can be conceptual or can be mathematical based and statistical based. It's very, very difficult to use that sort of way of attracting people. And for our project, this is very natural. It's a very natural out outlet. And we have some success as well in attracting people. And uh, the, the, the third point, obviously, is additional outlet. We are already done. Uh, normally anyway, uh, using traditional academic outlets. The other one is very, very important for us is the second line or um, uh, open scene uh, platform that allow user to provide a tailored environment. In, in that case, we can design our own building, we can put on our workshop display, uh, we can provide some sort of interactive um, actions and so on. And that's very important for us. Uh, although uh, second line compared with other um, 3D virtual world, um, display, if you like, in terms of sophistications, uh, it may look as, uh, a little bit rougher, if not as sophisticated, but it's very important because we can design it, we can design environment for us, for second life, and that's very, very important for us. But obviously, another uh, important factor, which I'm not writing here, is, uh, the, is, is the background uh, motivation, because Professor Austin Tech is already in this area for a long, long, long time, so we can very easily collaborate with uh, Professor um, Austin Tay, and he can give us a lot of help as well. So, and that's uh, those are the very important reason for us. So, so I just give a very quick uh, a run through, and just in case you didn't have a chance to uh, look at our website yet, or sorry, our a uh, FOK gallery uh, first. So we we decided to to make it um, all glass uh, building, so to allow the beautiful you know a second light uh, environment. Uh, to see through from the inside. And if you have a chance to come in, uh, you're welcome to come in to have a look and sit around our sofa and have a good time relaxing yourself. Uh, we put a lot of posters in there. So every everything, every different aspect of the uh, Fish for Knowledge project will have a poster. And the in the middle, in the middle of the um, of the session, you can see there is a loop video. Uh, this is a coral wave. Those are the actual video that we have uh, taken, and this is just a sample. So um, this is one one of the better videos, if you like. So uh, as, as I have seen, we, have, we are we are facing a lot of challenges because of of the noisy data that we are getting, uh, such as uh, algae. So very blue, very blue um, videos or very green videos, or um, or very very clear video, but there's no fish at all to be seen. Or lots and lots of fishes, but all of them are tiny or very far away or very blurry uh, videos and so on. So it can be frustrating. So and our project is really just to fish out those uh, important videos and uh, send it to the marine biology. And we also index them as well. So we tell them in terms of what fishes uh, are in this uh, video and how many of them and so on. And we pick out that in terms of quality as well, we read them in terms of quality. So if you have time, you're much welcome to um, have a quick look in our exhibition hall. And then we wanted to create some sort of virtual aquarium um, and the, pick out the typical uh, fish uh, and, and the marine life that you could see in the uh, coral reef. So we created an underwater um, aquarium. So this is the tunnel to the underwater uh, aquarium, and you can see from the outside. This is the outside picture. This is one screenshot of the underwater uh, aquarium. So we have some walking about turtles. Um, we have, we, I think we used to have a, a shark. Uh, I think it may have disappeared. And I can put it back uh, if anybody's interested. And we have some uh, tropical fish there and so on. And then for fun, we just uh, point to people that, you know, you can use a different technology uh, using this virtual reality view to uh, look around uh, some places and so on. So um, this can be used to, you know, pretending you are, you know, uh, swimming in the water and looking at our web, uh, sorry, looking at our aquarium and so on. So this is one uh, relevant technology. So the, re the reason we wanted to create this uh, fish for knowledge uh, gallery in the second world is we, we want to have an alternative, a different way of conveying our research result and to attract people really from, you know, uh, also the age and from also the interest. So we want to provide some sort of fun, interactive and educational space uh, so that we can provide different learning experience and we attract different audience. Okay. However, what we have found is promotion of the virtual uh, world uh, site is quite difficult. 
because uh, what I found is a lot of people don't have a high power enough computers um, to run Second Life, unfortunately. And one day, they, they, you know, up and, up and running, they quite a lot of, uh, there's a learning curve people need to overcome. Uh, there are technical issues they need to um, overcome as well. So quite a lot of hand-holding, really, at the beginning uh, to build confidence. And because a lot of things they need to learn, if you're not with them, they, don't, they often don't have the confidence to come back again, uh, particularly even our marine uh, life expert, you know, they don't have the confidence to come back to use this, the second life on their own. Well, the other thing is that before we, we build the, uh, the gallery, we didn't know there's uh, age limitations. And then we realized that you can actually uh, not attract the primary or secondary school children because we build that in a very fun, uh, a very intuitive way. And we are hoping uh, to attract younger people to get interested in marine life. And as a part of the project, we actually work with the National uh, Marine Museum uh, south of Taiwan, which is just at the Kandin Park, where we uh, collect the uh, data as well. So, so they were they were interested in uh, attracting primary and secondary uh, children, but we cannot work with them uh, by by uh, supporting them by using second life galleries. Um, nevertheless, uh, although although the, all these difficulties, we have attracted uh, people who are interested in in marine life observation. So, so for instance, I have. Um, receive some, so, so in Taiwan is a Taiwan University, and they have this uh, a marine uh, light department, and they were very interested in follow-up projects, and I will be visiting Taiwan uh, this summer again, so uh, we'll be talking about possible follow-up projects and so on, and separately, um, I have talked about previous, I have talked with diaper, uh, diverse, sorry, diverse, and I have talked with um, educators uh, for primary and secondary uh, school children, they were interested in this kind of work. So um, so we have attracted uh, people um, to our project and project work and marine conservation uh, in general. So that's a good thing. However, um, I think if we have a follow-up project, if we want to deploy this project, I think we probably need to rethink uh, our target audience and so on and how we present our, our work. So just for your reference, I just put a few uh, information here. Um, the location of our virtual world gallery, um, our in real life, the, the websites. Uh, uh, I used to work with AII at University of Edinburgh, and this is where the information is still hosted. And then we, because this was an EU project, uh, we have a FOK uh, project as well. This is still a hosting inf informatics as well. And at the end of the project, and I want to thank the uh, co-founders, lots of people helping us. Uh, you project give us money, give us money to uh, build everything. Uh, OpenVC give us uh, the shelf, the buildings, and so on. They give us uh, for free. University of Edinburgh give us the land. Uh, we have some contributions, but they also contribute quite a lot. And I want to thank uh, National Center for High Performance Computing. They are part of our EU project, so they are officially part of the uh, PI. But um, EU does not give them any money. So instead, it was uh, NCAC and the Taiwanese. Uh, a government, they fall out, so they fall out quite a lot of money. And it, lastly, I want to thank Academic Sinica uh, uh, Taiwan. They give us a lot of support in terms of marine and biology is a base of um, um, expertise. And last, I want to thank you for listening and uh, let me know if you have any questions and I'll try to uh, answer them where I can. Thank you.